it's Alex the Car Girl back at Molly for another visit with Bill McKnight in my continuing efforts to know as much about my race engine as possible. Now, if you saw in the last session, also available on Molly Aftermarket's YouTube channel, we learned about the difference between race bearings and stock bearings. Now, Bill mentioned an oil film, and that got me interested in learning more about the oil film between the crankshaft and the bearing. So, here we go, Bill. What do you have to say about that? Well, you know me, Alex. I've always got lots to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, the way the oil film works is between the engine bearing and the crankshaft is a thin film of oil. Mm -hmm. And if it isn't there, your engine doesn't last long at all, some 20, 30 seconds, and we've got a pile of junk. Okay. You know, so we have to have that film there. Now, that film is really thin. In, in an engine, even normal running engine, it will be as thin as two ten thousandths of an inch. Wow. So that's not a lot of oil there. And what it does, at that stage, the oil molecules, the little brown molecules in the oil, actually function kind of like roller bearings. <laughs> and they actually allow the crankshaft to roll inside that shell of bearings without touching it. With very little friction. As long as that oil film stays there and the oil is clean, isn't full of crud and stuff, your engine will run and run and run. Matter of fact, I remember you relating a story to me uh, just a couple weeks ago. You got your engine back from Arrington and you'd run it. How, how long did you run that thing? It was amazing. It had 15,000 street miles and over 600 drag passes, I believe. Yeah, and this was 600 and some horsepower Hemi and a Dodge Magnum, That's right? That's right, yeah. And Arrington said, the, you know, the bearings look like new because he used them over again. Yeah. And that's a testament to the quality of oil you have, the cleanliness of the oil, and the fact that you maintain a good oil film that whole time. It's good to know. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of how it works. Okay, so Bill, in our racing engine, as you know, we went with LAT Racing Oil. Now, they've proven to be a great brand of racing oil for us. What are your thoughts on choosing the right viscosity of oil, synthetic versus non-synthetic oil? How do you determine which to choose? Well, first of all, uh, the viscosity of the oil is actually driven by the bearing clearance. And the tighter the bearing clearance, the clearance between the bearings and the crankshaft, the tighter that clearance, the thinner the oil needs to be. Matter of fact, the rule of thumb is an easy one to remember is tight clearances, thin oil. Hmm. Loose clearances, thick, thick oil. oil. Now, in general, we can uh, discount uh, top fuel dragsters and, and uh, alcohol funny cars, but you know, most engines, in general, we want to strive to have the bearing clearance on the tight side. Tight bearing clearance matches the bearing radius and the crankshaft radius closer, and that spreads the load out over a bigger area. Mm -hmm. But that tight clearance, you can't pump oil through there that looks like honey. You know, you've got to have oil thin enough to pump through that tight clearance. So remember that, tight clearance, thin oil, loose clearance, thick oil. Got it. Now, I hope I don't offend anybody, but my feelings on the synthetic versus non-synthetic is I'm 100% a believer in synthetic oil. The uh, viscosity range of the oil is more uniform. Uh, its performance in cold weather is more uniform. Uh, it can stand more heat. Uh, uh, to me, it's just you should spend your money on really high quality oil. You know, you've got thousands in a race engine. Yep. Why would you want to scrimp on oil? Right, of course. Yep. So Makes those are my thoughts. All right. Well, Bill, it sounds like there's a little bit more to the story than what you've, what you've uh, divulged here. It seems like maybe you've oversimplified things a bit. I heard you mention the word tribology. Now, does this have anything to do with what we're talking about? Yeah, matter of fact, Alex, it's just like everything. You know, the more you know, the more you know there is to know. Right. And this is a huge, complicated subject that we just simplified down into a couple of little key points. Not that that's bad, but, you know, there are people who get degrees in tribology, which is a study of engineering. Actually, what tribology is, it is parts that are moving, hmm. okay, versus sitting still, and then parts that have a film of fluid, in our case, oil, involved in that moving as well. So you have the parts, their material, the static condition sitting there not doing anything, and then the parts moving with the oil film flowing around in them. And all those things interact together. You can't just say, well, this worked perfect when I drew it out on a piece of paper. Right. Well, I have to consider how is it going to run, and then in your engine, the fact that I'm making 907 horsepower, that force that's applying to the top of the piston is applied to the crankshaft. What does that do to the con rod? Well, we know the bore, the rod deforms, mm -hmm. you know, and all this stuff enters into whether the bearing's going to survive in the engine or not. So you're right, I oversimplified it, but you know, if we don't start and get the basics right, 
Yeah. All this complicated stuff doesn't mean anything. Right, so doesn't let's sink start in. with the basics. Make Makes sense? sense. Yeah. Absolutely. All righty. Thanks for coming in again. Thank you. Yep, see ya.